to the sipping sooner. Thank you for joining me again today. Now today, I'm going to have to shoot this video. I'm about, oh, I kept thinking that, you know, it was going to start, you know, the Williams Winery commitment was going to start at 3, then it was 3.15, then I'm looking up now, it's 4, so whenever it's going to start. So I'm going to cover both sides. Now, if we get them, then, hey, congrats to us, congrats to the coaching staff, Chavis, Bates, you know, Venables. Um, and if we get him, like I said before, I don't see a scenario where he's going to flip or anything like that unless we go out there and shit on ourselves <laughs> during uh, during the season. So with that being said, let's get into uh, if he didn't commit, you know, the fallout and the straight up panic and and the total devastation. In the event that we didn't get them. Once again, yesterday I kept seeing some old fuck shit on, on motherfucking YouTube, man. It never ceases to amaze me. All the fuckery that I see on this bitch. All right. Um, let's start with OU content creators, man. Listen. I want Williams Ranieri just as bad as everybody else. But I, I'm, not, I'm just not going to be panicking about his decision, man. At the end of the day, he's got to make a decision, him and his family. And whatever that decision is, that is what it is, at least for today anyway. So you don't need doing all this damn panicking and carrying on. Um... If he did commit to Missouri, there's uh, you know, a few circumstances and situations with that. You know, we know that they uh they NIL seems to be written like uh, you know, basically once he uh commits, you know, then he can somehow start collecting some of that money from the NIL portion of it. Um if so, then hell, you know. It's it's in the rule it's in the law book, I guess, you know, shit. But uh you know, I don't know what his situation is um at home financially. And it ain't none of my damn business on top of that. But if um uh, you know, if, if, you know, if I don't know if they well off or if they just getting by or whatever the situation is, if unfortunately, if his parents is pushing, you know, for him to, to, uh, take the money, you know, I guess, you know, it's their son. Um, me personally, I prefer to see parents lay everything out, just lay it out, you know, um, in front of your kid. And let them make the decision. You know, this is probably the first big decision that they get to make in their lifetime, you know, as they head into being adults in this damn world. So, um, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, we know he likes his relationships with Bates and Chavez and, and, um, and Venables. Um, he's got former teammates already here at OU and more coming to OU. Um, you know, I mean, he can go, I'm sure he's got, you know, good relationships with some of the guys in Missouri as well. But, uh, I mean, I think they need to start, uh, they might need to start being honest with them and telling them, you know, they can sit here and, you know, and try to talk shit about OU, and, you know, and all this and all that. But the reality of it is, man, is I don't care what kid it is or what athlete, what position. If you go to a school and you're the only one of your caliber at that school, life is going to be fucking miserable, man. Could you imagine lining up on a defensive line against Alabama, Georgia, LSU, even us? And not having another legitimate threat along that line to help take some of that double team and 
shit, in his case, even triple team his ass. I mean, he would be a non-factor, but I'm just trying to imagine the frustration and the mental anguish that 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 it would be, man, for, for him, you know? I mean, shit, because you already know, they they, they going to scheme his ass right out the game. Whereas you come to OU, you go to Georgia, even some of these other schools, anybody but Missouri, they they not going to be able to do that, man. You ain't going to scheme against Winnery and leave PJ over there on the other side to eat your ass alive. You just ain't going to do it. Not to mention, if we get stoned, you got him coming up the middle. Man, nah, you ain't going to be able to do that. From a football standpoint, it's a no-brainer, man. It's a no-brainer. And I know I heard some old fuck-ass Missouri dude talking about, well, Brent Venables could find himself in the same boat as Eli if he don't if he if he don't win this year. I done already went on record saying Brent Venables ain't going anywhere. Okay? He ain't going nowhere. Not not after this season. So, and like I said, I mean, I find it real hard to believe that we don't at least have a winning season, even though that's gonna be unacceptable in itself. Missouri though. Mm. I feel bad for you, man, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, I don't know what the situation is looking like back there at home, but, hey, you know, man, that's rough, man. I, I done already told y'all, man, Caden Durham is my cousin. Me and his dad, that's my first cousin. We grew up, raised together in the same, damn near in the same household, like tight. My whole family's pretty tight. And I know that my cousin, he wanted Caden at OU. I know he did because he's a hard, hardcore OU fan, man. We've been cheering for OU for years, man. All his life, he was born into cheering for fucking OU. So, you know, but at the end of the day, he had to let his son go where his son wanted to go, man. You know, you don't, you know, man, let me just stop with all that. So anyway, so, you know, Travis Davidson hit hit a nice point on uh, Jay's uh, Unfair Sports uh, last night. He was saying, you know, a lot of people looking at this wrong, and look, uh, you know, in the sense of, you know, we can all sit here and go, well, Eli Drinkwitz is going to get fired after this season. but. In reality, though, if if they choose Missouri, I mean, they already fucking know this. So they really don't give a damn if Eli gets fired or not. This is a financial move. You know what I mean? So the, the checks are still going to clear. Now, that, now, it still would open the door for him to be able to get out of there and then make the transition somewhere else. And at that point, hell, it's... It's open season again. We would think that he would come to OU, but I mean, at that point, you who knows, you know. So you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, for the for my panickers and doomers out there, man. Listen, like I said, I don't know what it's gonna take for us to get one of these boys. I mean, we got PJ, you know, last year, and we we very thankful and grateful for that. But uh, man. You know, if we get David Stone, if we get McKinley, one of those two men to anchor down that middle, then we'll be fine, man. We got we got Gilmore already. You know, it's looking like, you know, Nigel Smith, you know, he's coming. Hopefully. You know, and maybe even a Koye, you know, at this point. But then you still looking at you still got PJ coming back next year. You got Wine. You got R. Mason. Uh, Ethan should be back another year. I mean, I know he's going to have a better year this year, but shit, I don't know about going to the draft type of shit. Um, and then if all that fails, you you you, you know that they still sign. It's, it's always going to be some unknown player that none of us even see on the radar that's going to be in this class. That, that player easily could be on the defensive line. I doubt it. <laughs> but he could 
then if all that fails, we know there's the good old transfer portal. I know we we don't want to go in the transfer portal uh, every year and, and, and heavy like that all the time. But the reality of the situation is, is that this defensive line, even with Winery, Stone, and all those guys, it's going to be 2025 before we can actually compete for a damn title. You know what I mean? We can go in next year in the SEC and, you know, announce ourselves and start whooping, uh, especially these mid-tier teams. Oh, yeah, we need to whoop their ass as soon as we walk in the door. But, you know, your Alabamas, your Georgias, you know, we'll see what Tennessee does on defense, whether they going to go up a notch or not. Uh and m if they get some offense, we know they're going to have defense. Uh, you know, then LSU. So, you know, it's probably going to be, if we get, i put it like this, if we get Williams and David Stone, I'm going to say Smith and Okoye, I think in 25, man, we could actually push for a damn title. For real. Because we know we set on the offense side. <laughs> you see what they doing. Um, if we don't, we don't get Williams, we don't get McKinley or Okoye and all them, we say we end up with Nigel Smith, you know, and Gilmore. That's our class, you know. Then. I mean, we might get pushed back another year to 26 before we, you know, can go in there and actually start doing some damage. But either way, man, so it's, it might set us back a, a year or season. So, but we'll see, man, how it goes, man. Like I said, I'm sure that there are several defensive players out there that when this season is over, they're going to look and see and they're going to say, man, I'm going to go play for Brent Venables. Kind of like – uh what Lacey did from Notre Dame. You know, matter of fact, yeah, Trace Ford. Trace Ford, I mean, he's from Oklahoma, but he, trust me, I mean, he's an OSU guy, but he said shit. I mean, if Lincoln would have been here, well, I don't know that because he did take a visit to USC, didn't he? Hmm. I don't know, Trace. But anyway, y'all get what the hell I'm saying. So anyway, man, I just want to get on here to tell y'all, man, I'm gonna be disappointed in y'all if y'all panicking out there, man. Is it going? Is it? Does it suck, man? That he didn't pick us. If he didn't, yes, it sucks ass for real. But at the end of the day, we still have yet to go out here and show any of these kids, you know, what we can do. They we keep telling them, you know. Matter of fact, even as fans, I mean, we hopeful. We think that uh, they're going to be better. You know, I heard somebody panicking about the secondary struggling in the scrimmage. Well, they was installing new shit, man. You know, if they come out there and run vanilla, then, yeah, everybody know what they draw. But right now, they can't worry about the optics, man. The coaches know who's out there doing what they need to do to start. Okay? So... Y'all just sit back, relax, and just let it all play out, man. It's going to be all right. So, like I said, I got tired of waiting for it to start. And I don't know when it's going to start. Hell, I don't even know. Uh, but, shit, I got shit to do. So, anyway, it's your boy Sipping Sooner. You already know. Now I'm out this bitch. Peace.